Today, I'm going to be reading Chapter 14 of Ground Zero by Alan Gratz. This chapter is titled, Kochi. Bassoon's grip on Rashmina slipped, and she fell a few centimeters before he caught her again. The American helicopter kept hovering right behind, behind her. Whoomp, 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 whoomp. Rashmina knew that with just one squeeze of the pilot's trigger finger, bullets would tear through her and her brother. Everything she had cared about, everything she had worked for and struggled for, would all be gone in an instant. Come on, Rashmina, Bassoon cried over a roar of the helicopter. Climb! Bassoon shifted his weight and pulled, her, pulled harder on her hand. Rashmina's fear and panic gave her a desperate strength, and she wriggled her chest up onto the edge of the cliff and swung her leg up and over. Bassoon dragged her the rest of the way over the edge, and they had collapsed in each other's arms, weary but safe, except for the helicopter. Whoomp, 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 whoomp. Rashmina turned around again. The opaque blaze swirled in the air, blowing Rashmina's headscarf back from her hair and face. Rashmina thought she saw the pilot talking into the mic at his mouth. Was someone far away deciding her fate? The same way someone far away, the same way somebody far away, piloting a drone, had her si- had decided her sister Hila's fate. Rashmina stared onto the eyes of the helicopter's pilot. Would those be the last eyes she ever saw? The opaque hung in the air a moment longer, and then, as suddenly as it had come, it tilted and lifted away to the right, leaving Rashmina and Pasoon where they sat on the edge of the cliff. Rashmina slumped against her brother. She wanted to flop back on the ground and pass out, but the pops and booms of the American and the Taliban, still fighting behind them, meant that she and Pasoon were still too exposed. Pasoon knew it was too, knew it too. They helped each other up, and with a quick squeeze of Pasoon's hand, Rashmina thanked him for saving her life. Pasoon nodded, and then they hurried along the cliff, putting as much mountain between themselves and the battle as they could. They followed a goat path down and around the mountainside, where they ran into an old abandoned logging camp. It was a small plateau where people had once lived while they cut down the Afghanistan towers, cedars, and pines and sold them across the border to Pakistan. The Americans had shut most of these logging camps down, convinced the money made there was was being used to buy weapons for the Taliban. But the move had backfired in a way. When the loggers were put out of work, Many of them traded their chainsaws for rifles and joined the very same insurgents the Americans were trying to stop. An explosion boomed from the other side of the ridge, and a tall gray mushroom cloud spiraled up to the peak. Rashmina took Bassoon's hand again, and they dove behind a pile of old cedars as bullets peppered the logs. Rashmina wanted to scream, partly from fear and partly from anger. She had just gone looking for her brother. She hadn't expected to end up in the middle of a battle. Why couldn't everyone just leave them alone? Rashmina stayed flat on her face for a moment, catching her breath. When she finally looked up, she was staring right into the eyes of a camel. The sight of it was so silly, so surreal after what they had been through, that she wanted to laugh out loud. Bassoon didn't laugh. Ha! Bassoon did laugh. Ha! Plague. Plague. The camel spit in Bassoon's face. Gross, Bassoon cried, and he wiped his face on his sleeve. Ah, Bassoon, Rashmina said, putting a hand on his arm. Bassoon froze. There were even more camels sitting behind the woodpile, and people, too. Twenty or thirty of them, an entire tribe of men and women and children, all cross-legged on the ground, staring at Rashmina and her brother. The men were white-bearded and wore trousers and turbans and long tunics like Rashmina's father did. Most of the women wore tunics and pants like Rashmina, but a few wore dresses with full skirts and wide sleeves, decorated with metallic laces and pendants and amulets. Their children huddled among them, the boys wrapped in blankets and the girls wrapped in shawls, unblinking and unmoving. These people were Kochi, these people were Kochi. Rashmina realized suddenly she had seen them before, but only in the distance. Kochi were nomads. 
They had no year-round home, instead traveling back and forth across the border from Afghanistan to Pakistan with the seasons, selling rugs they had made and trading the meat and cheese and wool from the, their goats, from their goats and sheep and camels. Hi, Rashmina said. The Kochi stared at her and bassoon, rock and dirt and plug from the mountaintop above them as the battle between the Taliban and Americans raged on. But the Kochi and their animals didn't even flinch. Let's get out of here, Bassoon whispered. He tried to get up and go, but Rashmina pulled him back down. Not with them still shooting, Rashmina told him. One by one, the Kochi unrolled the prayer rugs. Rashmina couldn't believe it. They were going to pray right here, with an American helicopter flying around, shooting bullets every which way. Rashmina and her brother felt obligated to join them. Ordinarily, they would have done wadu, wash and clean themselves with water in preparation for praying. They made a tanimonium instead, using dust of the ground to clean themselves. God was forgiving and merciful, and would have still accept their prayers if he willed it. Better to pray than, not, than, than to not pray, their father always told them. Rashmina fixed her headscarf and stood and bowed, stood and stood and stood and bowed, stood and knelt. God knew Rashmina's heart better than she knew her own. And when she sat to ask for forgiveness, she also said a prayer for Pasoon. Please help turn my brother's heart from revenge, Rashmina prayed. Please show him another path. Rashmina spied Pasoon's toy airplane sticking out of his pocket, and she snatched it and tucked it away under her tunic while he had his eyes closed in prayer. She still hoped God would answer her prayers, but it didn't hurt hurt to have a backup plan. When they were finished praying, an old Kochi woman stood and came over to Rashmina and Pasoon. Come, she said, and held out a hand. Rashmina glanced at her brother. His scowl was back. Rashmina knew her brother wanted to be on the way to the Taliban, not playing nice with the nomads. But they could, they could still hear the tung, tung, tung of Taliban rifles over the ridge. She and her brother weren't going anywhere. Not yet. Rashmina accepted the old woman's invitation, and she and Pasoon crouched low as they followed her to a small blanket, where a mother and father sat with their two children. The old woman was their grandmother, Rashmina guessed. Chickens clucked quietly in the wooden cages all around them. The baby camel in a tightly bundled blanket twisted its long neck to sniff them. Three baby goats bleated and butted their heads against Rashmina and Pasoon as they sat down. Na, rice and cooked chicken and pistachios were already laid out on a blanket in bowls. And there was a woman offered the food to her guest. guests. Pasoon dug in greedily, and Rashmina gave her a swift elbow to the ribs. They had to accept the act of hospitality. To refuse it would be a grave insult, but they were they shouldn't eat too much either. The Kochi, the Kochi were clearly poor, and rice alone must be very precious to a tribe with no land of their own. Rashmina took a small piece of na and a pinch of rice and nodded her thanks. Basoon frowned, but he did the same. Rashmina looked around at the Kochi as she ate. What would happen if a battle between the Americans and the Taliban spilled over the ridge? What would all these people do? There was nowhere for them to go, nowhere else for them to hide. Rashmina seemed to be the only one worried about it. And the two little children giggled as the baby goats butted, butted bassoon in the forest foot. The grand the grandmother worked at a weaving at weaving a carpet on a small portable loom, and the father looped and knotted cloth into this into some kind of satchel. The mother cradled something under her shawl. And Rashmina was surprised to see a tiny baby wrapped up so tightly in swaddled clothes that it couldn't move anything but its little mouth. Its eyes fluttered close as it drifted off to sleep. What must it be like to live this way, Rashmina wondered, to be born under the sky, to be raised on the, on the move and sleep under around the softly crackling fire. There was a charming simplicity to it. The Kochi owned only what their camels could carry did only what was necessary to survive. There was no walking three k kilometers every day to, to go to school, no fitting in homework around housework. Rashmina doubted any of them could read, let alone do long a division. 
They certainly didn't know what a computer was and didn't care. But soon appeared to be just as charmed, laughing with the children as the baby goat tried to climb their father's back. Rashmina wished for a moment that she and her brother were both Kochi. It seemed like the nomads existed in their own world, one completely separate from the conflict between the Taliban and the Americans. She knew it couldn't be that simple, and the Kochi had to be have, have been drawn into the war and affected by it, it just like everyone else. But she loved the idea of climbing on a camel and leaving all this behind. The explosions on the other side of the mountains moved away from moved away down the valley and pursued stood i have to go he said and the spell was broken rashmina bowed their thanks again to the old to the old woman and her family stood in, in hurry to follow her brother she caught up to him just outside the old logging ca- old logging camp and grabbed him by the arm oh no you don't rashmina said you're not going to the taliban soon but soon pulled free watch me he said and he kept moving. Rashmina seat, and her brother could be so stupid sometimes. You grew up in a, in a jam bottle, she told him, following on his heels. You're the daughter of a sheep, Bassoon fired back. May you be eaten by termites, Rashmina told him. She couldn't trade insults with her brother all day. Go home, Bassoon told her. You're not even supposed to be out here with a male chaperone. Rashmina caught up again and matched her brother for step for step for step. Well, I will have one now, she told him. You're com- you're not coming with me, Basun told her. Watch me, Rashmina said. Basun stopped and turned on Rashmina. There's nothing you can say or do to stop me from going to the Taliban, he told her. Oh yeah? Rashmina said. She pulled the toy airplane from inside her tunic and waggled it just out of his reach. Then what am I supposed to do? Then what am I su- Then I suppose you don't mind leaving without this. That's all for today. Thank you for listening.